we'll come back the next part is creating oracle database we have just installed the software now it's time for us to begin creating the databases and then getting our database set and then we begin seeing some stuff so we are going to use a tool called the database configuration assistant whenever we need to to create databases or delete databases or manage databases we use a tool we call the database configuration assistant so let's see what that is so when we come to this oh, when we come to all our programs you can see that this is the tool that we use this tool is different from the oui or the oracle universal installer which is used to install and uninstall oracle from our machine so we are going to use the database configuration assistant when we launch it the pop-up screen it loads up like that so we can begin the welcome screen it is showing us that uh, this one enables you to create a database configure database and then manage all the databases so it is basically looking at the database managing databases creating deleting etc so i can just click next and then we move on there are 12 steps here and so we have to move through every step what you want to do is just create a database we don't want to delete we don't want to manage anything it's just creating a database click next uh, we can just use a custom database or a data warehouse but for our case we are just going to use the general purpose uh processing the general purpose of transaction processing template it has everything we need so we can click next or you can just come and see the details of each of these templates and then you see you go through them one by one so when you click next they give us they ask us for the global database name and then the sid the global database name is just the name of the database associated with each service if the machine if the, the database is going to be running on a local host then it will be associated with that local host or plus that domain name uh, where the database will be running if it is maybe for an institution or anything it will be associated with that domain for the institution then the sid is the name of the database we want to create and then the associated instance id so we are going to give it a name called customers that is the database name we want to give that is what we want to give in most cases the global database name is the same as the sid so when you run next we come to the next screen we have the enterprise manager they tell us that you want to configure the enterprise manager the enterprise manager is one of the tools used to manage uh, oracle so it had that graphical user interface but we're not going to configure that we shall just neglect it and we move on then in the next tab we have the automatic maintenance activities we can enable them to leave them by default to leave them on default so we can click next on this screen we have the different administrative accounts we are going to be looking at this in the next section these are the ones with accounts we've been using previously connect sys sysdba connect system we shall be learning about them in details in later sections but we are going to use the same password for them we can decide to use different passwords or we can just use the same password we are going to use just the allow that the minimum password character they the, the, the want the password complexity policy but i'm not looking into that but when you're in the working environment you need to pay much attention to the passwords you give to the user accounts especially these administrative accounts so you can just click next so here they ask for the storage type and the location of the database files where you want to store database files we shall leave this to the default so that but you can specify where you want to store your database files maybe you, you don't want uh, the other location you want a new location where you'll be storing your database files or you want a storage place where you'll be storing the multiplex files but we shall leave everything to default so when you click next you can just say uh, specify the flash recovery area we shall be looking at this later but it basically means where a place where we store all the data all the backup files that is where we store everything about the recovery we can enable the archiving to just simplify the process for us then when you click next they say do you want the sample schema we can just enable that to come with some 
simple simple data like the example like the hr human resource database then i can click next then they give us the memory size the sga and the pga the memory target you can increase this or reduce it but you can leave it to the defaults you can come to the different memory sizing the block size you remember when we looked at the logical storage structures the different processes that can be supported at 150 you can increase or reduce them you can have you can come to the character set this is the language you want to the database to be using you can choose a different language maybe arabic maybe whatever language you want to use for your database then the connection mode it will be a dedicated server we don't need to know much of this so we can look at when you look down here we see initialization parameters when you click on them these are the initialization parameters that are really stored in the sp and the p files you remember the parameter files we looked at when we are looking at the database files so these are some of the database these are some of the parameters there are so many of them and we can see them here in the summary you can even have a look at the advanced parameter files there are extremely so many so many parameters these are the different settings of a, a database so you can close them and then we click next when we click next you can see we are on step 10 of 11 don't worry we're about to finish this is just the summary uh, of everything we have the control files the data files i think when you look at this you can indeed see uh, everything we have we have one control file which is available here we have the data files so once everything is set then we can click next and then we can create our database our database name is called the customers we can save it as part of the templates but we can leave it for now then when we finish they give us a summary wonderful summary that our customers uh, the single instance it is see everything here is extremely important you can save it somewhere uh, just for some purposes i'll save it here in my save okay then i finish then you can the that the database creation process has started so we can so once everything has been done congratulations that's all so that is it for this section we meet in the next section